Good morning, everyone. Merry Christmas. A blessed Christmas day to all. May the birth of Christ, whose, may, may the Christ whose birth we celebrate today give meaning to our lives each day of the year. Let's stand and sing our introit hymn. O come all ye faithful. We're just doing the first verse and chorus. And the word became flesh and lived among us, full of grace and truth. We love to sing the old familiar carols, but we are also called to sing to the Lord new songs, songs which acknowledge all the marvelous things that the Lord has done. How can we help shouting for joy on this most wonderful day as we celebrate the birth of Jesus? How can we resist bursting into joyful song with music? Music for the Lord, with all kinds of instruments and with the sound of singing rising from the earth itself. Let this service of worship be an expression of our joy and our desire to live lives in harmony with the environment, with one another, and with the one whose birth we celebrate today, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We'll now sing our hymn of adoration, number 135, Christians Awake.
please be seated. We'll now have the lighting of the Christ candle. We light the Christ candle to proclaim that out of love for the world, God dispelled darkness forever through the birth of Jesus Christ, the light of the world. May the Lord Jesus Christ take all darkness out of our hearts, now and forever. Amen. Before we do our prayer of confession, we're going to have uh, some special music.
we celebrate the coming of the light of the world. We have prayed for that light to enter our lives and our world. Yet, we confess there have been times when we have obscured the light for others through insensitivity and prejudice, through the use of careless and hurtful words or selfish and destructive actions. Come, Lord Jesus, be light for our darkness and empower us with your spirit to be faithful bearers of your light into all the shadowy and clouded areas of people's lives. Amen. Let us stand and sing our children's hymn, Once in Royal David City, number 166. Let's remain standing as we sing our hymn of illumination, Angels We Have Heard on High.
You may be seated. O Almighty God, who by the birth of thy Holy One into the world, as on this day, didst give thy true light to dawn upon our darkness, grant that as thou hast given us in this time present to believe in the mystery of his incarnation, and hast made us partakers of the divine nature, so in the world to come we may ever abide with him in the glory of his kingdom. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We'll now have our readings. Our first reading from Isaiah 62, verses 6 to 12, Prepare the way for the Lord. On your walls, Jerusalem, I have placed sentries. They must never be silent day or night. They must remind the Lord of his promises and never let him forget them. They must give him no rest until he restores Jerusalem and makes it a city the whole world praises. The Lord has made a solemn promise and by his power he will carry it out. Your grain will no longer be food for your enemies, and foreigners will no longer drink your wine. But you that planted and harvested the grain will eat the bread and praise the Lord. You that tended and gathered the grapes will drink the wine in the courts of my temple. People of Jerusalem, go out of the city and build a road for your returning people. Prepare a highway, clear it of stones, put up a signal so that the nations can know that the Lord is announcing to all the earth. Tell the people of Jerusalem that the Lord is coming to save you, bringing with him the people he has rescued. You will be called God's holy people the people the Lord has saved. Jerusalem will be called the city that God loves, the city that God did not forsake. The word of the Lord. Please join me for our uh, responsive Psalm 97. The Lord is king, let the earth rejoice. Let the many coastlands be glad. (coughs) Clouds and thick darkness are all around him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Fire goes before him and consumes his adversaries on every side. His lightnings light up the world. The earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his righteousness and all the peoples behold his glory. All worshipers of images are put to shame. Those who make their boast in worthless idols, all gods bow down before him. Zion hears and is glad and the towns of Judah rejoice because of your judgments, O God. For you, O Lord, are the most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. The Lord loves those who hate evil. He guards the lives of his faithful. He rescues them from the hand of the wicked. Light dawns for the righteous and joy for the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, and give thanks to his holy name. Our epistle reading from Titus 3, verse 4 to 7, 
saved by grace, heiress of hope. For when the kindness and, the, and love of God, our Savior, was revealed, he saved us. It was not because of any good deeds that we ourselves had done, but because of his own mercy that he saved us. Though the Holy Spirit, who gives us new birth and new life, was washing us, God poured out all the Holy Spirit abundantly on us through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that by his grace we might be put right with God and come into possession of the eternal life we hope for. The word of the Lord. Our gospel reading from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 20, Shepherds and Angels. There were some shepherds in that part of the country who were spending the night in the fields, taking care of their flocks. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone over them. They were terribly afraid. But the angel said to them, Don't be afraid. I am here with good news for you, which will bring great joy to all the people. This very day, in David's town, your Savior was born, Christ the Lord. And this is what will prove it to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths, lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great army of heaven's angels appeared with the angel, singing praise to God. Glory to God in the highest heavens, and peace on earth to those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them back into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has told us. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and saw the baby lying in the manger. When the shepherds saw him, they told them that the angel had said about the child. All who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said. Mary remembered all these things and thought deeply about them. The shepherds went back, singing praises to God for all they had heard and seen. It had been just as the angels had told them. The Gospel of the Lord. We will now have some special music followed by our Christmas reflection by Reverend Dr. James.
came into English usage as translations of words used by the French during the 1793 to 1794 period, known as the Reign of Terror. It had then the meaning of violence perpetrated by government. It was not until the early 1970s that the word terror came to be seen as violent, destructive acts such as bombings committed by groups in order to intimidate populations or government into granting their demands. Before the terrorism of 9-11, there was the downing of the Pan Am Flight 103 on December 21, 1988, over Lockerbie, Scotland, when all 259 persons on board and 11 persons on the ground were killed. As of November 30, 2023, a total of 660 people have been killed and 2,330 other people have been injured in 559 mass shootings in the United States. And as recent as last week, Thursday, the 21st of December, 2023, a 24-year-old history student killed 14 people at Charles University in Prague, in the Czech Republic. And now the war between Israel and Hamas, Russia and Ukraine, and the many regional and domestic conflicts all around the world have resulted in the loss of thousands of life, many of those being killed, being non-combatants. In Grenada, we've had our own share of gun violence with at least two or more assassination-style killing occurring in 2023. What I'm trying to say to you is that the world in which we live is a dangerous place. And so it's very easy to feel unsafe, especially when one travels to cosmopolitan cities. With all the gloomy news we need some word of hope. The thing is, this word of hope actually came to us almost three centuries ago. When the angels appeared to the shepherds in the field at night saying, be not afraid, for I bring you good news of great joy for all people. Noted the command to not be afraid was directed directly related to this sudden, dazzling appearance of otherworldly beings to the shepherds. But we may, we may also want to take it to heart ourselves. Be not afraid. What the angels were bringing to the shepherds and to us was good news of great joy. That is what our world needs today. Joyous good news. The reason for our good news or the good news according to the angels was the coming of God in the form of a baby to give us hope. What did the angels mean when they referred to Jesus as a savior? It meant that God had taken the initiative to provide a means by which we would be restored to relationship with God's self. Given that life is so tenuous and uncertain, we need to know that we are invested in something that can withstand the vagaries of the times in which we live. And because as physical beings we are easily expendable, just have to look at the number of people who have been killed in such a short time in that war between Israel and Hamas. It is important to ensure that we are able to survive beyond our physical debts. The good news is not about our physical safety, but our spiritual security. In other words, 
the good news is first and foremost about a relationship with God in Christ. Eternal life is what is being proffered. And eternal life is not about a place, but about a relationship. Yesterday I was at an event and someone came and asked me, do you believe in heaven and in hell? And my response was, the Bible teaches that there is a heaven and a hell. He didn't like my response. He wanted me to say whether or not I believed in a heaven and a hell. The reason that I gave that response is that for me, it has never been important whether there is a heaven or a hell. It has always been important whether or not I am in a relationship with God and Christ. Uh, are you understanding the difference? Uh, recently, I participated in a training of a group of people. And one question that I would ask them was, if they had one day to live, what would they do in the 24 hours they had left? Some of them jokingly said, well, I'll go and have a big party. But the majority of people seriously responding said, I would spend that time with my family and loved ones. In other words, when it comes down to what provides meaning in life, it is not what we possess. It is not the positions that we hold, but the meaningful relationships in which we are engaged. And the most important relationship we can ever have is a relationship with God in Christ. When I'm working with persons with life-threatening illnesses, especially those who have had a terminal prognosis, I would acknowledge with them that there is not much over which they have control. But it is important to take control of those things over which they do. And some of these things may relate to estate planning if they had not already done so and mending of relationships that may have been damaged. The thing is, we don't need a terminal prognosis that we're going to live at least six months to know that we are all terminal. For indeed, we are all terminal, meaning we all have an expiry date. The irony is that We don't know when the end would occur. And so this is why it is wise to take good, the good news that Jesus is offering to heart. It was this good news that Jesus offered to Mary and Martha when their brother Lazarus had died. And he said, and I quote from the message, um, transliteration of the Bible, paraphrase, sorry. You don't have to wait for the end. I am right now resurrection and life. The one who believes in me, even though he or she dies, will live. And everyone who lives believing in me does not ultimately die at all. John eleven twenty five to 26. Recently, I was speaking to a friend who was complaining about pains in her body. And I asked her when was the last time she had a complete checkup. And she could not remember. I then suggested that around her birthday week, the best gift she can give herself as a birthday present would be to have a complete checkup. And that she should do that every year, at least once a year. You know, Christmas is a time when many people give and receive gifts. However, many people ignore the gift that became available because of the first coming, death and resurrection of Christ. The promise of the angels was not realized until after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, but this gift has been available 
ever since. If we accept the gift of eternal life by being restored to relationship with God in Christ, then we will be able to experience firsthand the good news of great joy. Once we have this news as part of our experiential existence, although we may be concerned about the state of the world in which we live, although we may be concerned about the world being an unsafe place, we would not be afraid. You see, the only antidote to fear is faith. And faith that is placed in God, in Christ, is never unfounded. And so may the birth of the Christ child be a source of great hope and joy for you this day and always. Fear not. Be not afraid. Amen. Thank you, Rev. We'll now stand and sing our hymn of response, number 139, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. You may be seated while we take up our offering.
loving God, receive and bless these gifts, which we give in response to the greatest gift of all, your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. May our lives in this offering be used to reveal your love in as many ways and to as many people as possible. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Our prayer of thanksgiving is responsive this morning. O oh God, we thank you for the message of love that Christmas brings to a world where hatred and violence is experienced by so many people in so many places. Help us to reveal in our lives the love that Jesus so embodied, the love that Paul wrote about so eloquently, the love that is patient and kind, the love that is never envious or boastful or arrogant or rude, the love that does not insist on its own way and is not irritable or resentful, that in all things we may put love first. O oh God, we thank you for the message of, message of joy that Christmas brings to a world grown used to suffering. We remember in your presence the hungry and homeless men, women, and young people, our brothers and sisters in Christ, who cry out for a word of tenderness, a touch of love, a sign of hope, some practical help. We remember also those for whom this season is clouded by loneliness or anxiety or bereavement. We pray that they may be kept from bitterness and despair as they remember the birth of him who bore our grief and carried our sorrows, yet who was born at Bethlehem that people might experience life in all its fullness. O oh God, we thank you for the message of kindness that Christmas brings to a world grown self-centered and cynical through greed. Help us to remember that Jesus Christ came not to be served, but to serve. May we all find true joy and fulfillment in giving ourselves in service to others. As we remember together the birth of him who came to give himself to us. O oh God, we thank you for the message of peace that Christmas brings to our troubled world. Give peace among nations peace in lands torn apart by warring factions, peace in our homes and in our hearts as we remember the birth at Bethlehem of the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us stand and sing our hymn of sending forth joy to the world.
we have lifted up our voices and sung to the Christ child, the heavenly King. We go rejoicing over this wonderful gift of God, confident in the love of Jesus and in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the blessing of God and the peace of the one born today, Jesus Christ, go with you. Um, as we uh, leave today, you are invited to share a sign of peace. We have one more announcement and then we'll sing our recessional. Next Sunday, December 31st, is a fifth Sunday and Reverend Nigel Lindsay will be our preacher. Dr. James will be at Samaritan. Some of you may have heard about the weather problems in the north of the country um, last week the floods, the landslides. Um, I learned just on Friday that um, the house of one family member from Samaritan was taken by the river. That family, at least some of them, are now residing with Reverend Lindsay, temporarily. So what we've been asked to do is if we could take up some, um, some food, get some food, people bring some food stuff and maybe some clothing that we can probably have so that when Reverend Lindsay come next week, he can take up to help. That would be good. Uh, they, the father in that family is wheelchair confined. He had fallen off a bridge and damaged his spine, so he's been there for a couple of years. There is a mom. Um, there is one teenager who goes to McDonald College and there are three other adult um, young ladies and three children. So as you, you think about what you might be able to give, remember these, this detail. Our recessional is we wish you a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody. Mm -hmm.